Namaste, Namaste everybody and RTS to welcome to Yoga Chopal. How are you all? Uh, now I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, so Sunita, Sonoko, Lelija, Shiva Chaitanya Ji. Nice to see you. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Kavita Ji. Namaste, everybody. And Yoga Chopal, we bring once again with a wonderful topic. Before we begin discussing about any of these things, let us begin with the Shanti Patha. Hmm. So we will chant Omkar three times and Sahna Bhavati Shanti Paat. <clears throat> Gently open your eyes. Okay. So, Yoga Chopal and as we all know, the theme for this Chopal is Healthy Ways of Water Intake. There are few questions we have already posted on our invite. Am I drinking enough water? <laughs> that is one question that we always keep asking. What is the correct mm. amount? Is it eight glasses? No, no, no. My friend said six glasses. Mm. And sometimes we feel, no, we are not drinking enough. Am I dehydrated? Or am I overhydrated? <laughs> many, many questions. And we have invited our, my very close friend and I can call him my Guru Bhai <laughs> because we both are studying Sanskrit from our Param Pujya Mataji, Mataji Pushpa Dikshit Ji. So here we have Dr. Akhilesh Shukla Ji. Didi, namaste. Namaste, namaste. So you can say hello to him. Yeah. Hello to all. You can tilt your camera a little downward like this. Yeah, this way, this much. Yeah. Is it okay? Little more. Yeah, this much. Yeah, this much. So Dr. Akhilesh Shukla basically is from Chhattisgarh. He's BAMS, MD then PhD in Ayurveda, then MSc in Yoga, and he's been studying Paninian Sanskrit with our Guru Mataji Parampujya, Dr. Pushpa Dikshit Ji. So today he will enlighten us on the aspects of water intake. But before we request him to speak, uh, uh, may I request Shraddha to please uh, enlighten us on the programs that Nadalaya is conducting currently and maybe coming up in future. Yeah, so over to Shraddha now. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nadalaya Presents Yoga Chopal. A few announcements about the courses offered by Nadalaya. First of all, those of you who are not aware uh, that uh, Nadalaya now has its own website. So I shall put the details of the website on the chat box soon. Um, the Sanskrit course is on Udemy and on Nadalaya website. 
It is a course that teaches one to read, write, pronounce, and transliterate. This course is a guide for those who wish to read, write, pronounce Devanagari script, and also for those who wish to chant shlokas with correct pronunciation. Two days Nada Yoga workshops are conducted to help seekers reach from Swara to Ishwara, that is, to internal to one's internal self by using music. Now let us see about the current running courses. Yoga Darshan is conducted through live lectures online on Sundays at 5 p.m. It is a course that helps one understand the Patanjala Yoga Sutras in detail. All 195 sutras will be covered in four levels. Currently, we are doing the first level. Another live online course of chanting and understanding the basic meaning of Bhagavad Gita is going on on Saturday. Again, it is a live uh, lecture online um, at 4 p.m. All 700 shlokas from chapter 8 shall be chanted over three levels. Uh, a two-day traditional voice culture workshop is going to be conducted on 20th and 21st of April. This workshop shall be conducted by Srimati Sombala Kumarji and Dr. Pradhan. The registrations for this course are currently on. An upcoming program, a series of recorded sessions on Indian knowledge tradition shall be soon released. To know more about these courses, please find Nadalaya on all major social media platforms. I shall share the details about the same on the chat box in some time. I once again welcome you all to Yoga Chopal 4. Today our topic is healthy ways of water intake. The same topic shall be covered next week on 14th April in Hindi. Pani Pine Ke Sahi Tari. So, I shall request Dr. Pradhan to take over now. Thank you. Thank you, Shraddha. Thank you for giving us this detail, these details about different courses that we are running. So, without any more delay, we wish to invite now Dr. Akhilesh Shuklaji. And we are going to... First, he will give his uh, views on how to take water and then we are free to ask questions at the end of the session. So here I invite Dr. Akile Shuklaji. Didi, namaste. Yeah, namaste. So I will share the PPT. Yeah. Whether the PPT is visible to all? And yes, we can see. Mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. My voice is clear. Your voice is. Uh, yeah. Is okay. Visible? When we listen to it, we will come to know. Yeah. Is it okay now? Yeah. This is better. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you so much. Prasni uh -huh. Didiji and the team for giving me this opportunity to meet you all in this online platform. And it was really wonderful to know about the various activities conducted by the Nadalaya group. And today is again a very auspicious day because today is the World Health Day. Oh, okay. and yeah. <laughs> so today is World Health Day. And uh, the theme of this World Health Day is health for all. So everyone should be healthy and health should be our fundamental rights. But when we say that everyone should be healthy, the world, world should be healthy, we cannot 
give whole responsible responsibility to the medical group hmm. that if we think that uh, strengthening our medical fraternity or strengthening our infrastructure of the medical field more and more number of doctors more and more number of hospitals will make the nation healthy or make the world healthy this is very wrong concept hmm. actually we have to take responsibility in our hand how we live what what are the things we are doing what is my daily uh, regimen what is my seasonal regimen what is what kind of food i am taking so if we take care of these all aspects then we will be healthy and thinking that medical team will uh, do the everything then it is not at all possible most of the diseases we are suffering at present these all are the creation of our own that means most of the life is time related diseases it is we are the creator of these all diseases so we have to be very careful and we have to be aware about the way we are living the way we are eating the way my regimen is there and in relation to that consuming water is one of the very vital point so yeah. in today's session we will discuss particularly about the healthy ways of water intake hmm. so these are the few points which i will be covering hmm. so the general guidelines of water intake then importance of water for our health hmm. then the quality of water then the ph of water because now there are so right. many uh talks are going on about the drinking of alkaline water it is very good so we will discuss about this also then the temperature of water oh. there are various opinion that consuming hot water is very good consuming cold water is good consuming normal water is good so we will discuss about this also then minerals which are present in the water the packaged water now we know that the water is available in the polythene pouch or in the plastic bottles so what are the advantages disadvantages of these packaged water that also we will know in this session quantity of water as rajni didi already told that there are lot of confusion about how much water should i drink whether it is 6 glass 8 glass or in terms of liter whether i go for 2 liter 3 liter 5 liter so what what is the right quantity of water for health so that point then what happens if i am not consuming enough quantity of water which is required for my health then what happen if i am consuming excess amount of water that is over hydration so uh, what kind of health issues will occur by over hydration consuming excess amount of water then how to decide what quantity of water is right quantity for me then heating or boiling water consuming boiling water or boiled and cooled water then uh, in india we have a process when where we add some herbs in the water like some of the places we add clove sometimes we add ginger or tulsi or basil leaves or some other uh, simple herbs we add in the water and we process the water by adding these herbs and drink that water so whether it is good for health or not that point also will then the storage of water so in what kind of container we should store our water whether the plastic container is good or how exactly we have to store the water then one important point is water intake in relation to food so at what time we have to take whether prior to food or at in between the food or after the food when exactly we have to consume the water that point also we will cover in this session then using two different kinds of water alternatively like sometimes uh, the people they take warm water uh, early morning then again they will take cold water or the refrigerated water so whether this is correct considering our health then the usha pan vidhi this is also the people say that early morning you wake up and drink a lot of water and some of the people uh, they say that i am thinking 2 liters of water waking up early in the morning so we will discuss 
and we will also see uh, what is the correct method of drinking water early in the morning what is the correct method what is the correct time what is the right quantity so and the, another one more traditional method which is not widely followed but this is also one part of our yogic system it is nasa jalapana the yoga system we have neti there is one method in ayurveda explained as nasa jalapana so drinking water through the nose so these all points we will cover in this discussion in this chapter see the human being is considered as the epitome of this whole existence we say that purusho ayam lok samhita that means the human body represents the miniature of this whole creation and we know that the in earth we have nearly 70% of water and uh, nearly 30% of land similarly in our human body we have nearly 45 to 70% of water and <clears throat> this varies from our different ages like during the infancy and child childhood period the total water content it is nearly 75% as the person advancing as the age advances then uh, in the old age it reaches to the 40 to 50 percent and the different body tissue the ratio of water is also different like uh, our muscle mass nearly 70 to 75 percent of water our lungs it is nearly 80 percent of water our brain and heart it is nearly 75 percent and the bones which we say is very hard structure of our body that also comprises nearly 10 to 20 percent of water so we can understand that a nearly 70 nearly 60% of on an average nearly 60% of our body comprises of water water is the life of living organism so even there is a concept that the the life originated in the this earth through the water only and if you go to the history most of our civilization they developed on the bank of the river and even in the present world if you see the most of the mega cities in the world they are near the water reservoir or near the water source like most of the cities if you consider the uh, like new york or bombay or kolkata in india or the chennai these all are the mega cities they all are near the sea area and some of the very ancient civilization like the indus valley civilization is all they developed near the uh bank of the river so because the water is very fundamental need of our livelihood so all these without water it is not possible to live so that is the reason that uh, most of these developed near the rivers or near the source of water and the water if we take judiciously in the proper manner in the proper time and in the right quantity and the safe for the good quality water then it is nectar for our health it is very beneficial for our health but the same water if we are drinking without any care and without considering its quantity and without considering what is how much is required for my body mindless drinking of water then as i already told that our health our body is nearly 70% it contains water so we are compromising our nearly 70% of our health so that is the importance of water for our health in the ayurveda this is very well described in acharya vagvata who is the author of ashtanga sangraha and ashtanga hridaya one of the most popular book of ayurveda he has quoted that paniyam pranina prana vishvam yavachat tanmayam so the whole this universe is filled of water and water is li- water is the life of the living beings so lot of importance is given in the ancient medical scripture about drinking water the importance of water for our health the proper quantity of water is required to maintain the normal temperature of the body that we say as the thermoregulation 
and it also requires for the lubrication and cushion of the joints we know that synovial fluid is there in our joint which acts like the cushion the proper quantity of water intake is required even to maintain the proper fluid food fluid balance in all our synovial joints then it protects our spinal cord and other sensitive tissues and water helps to get rid of the some metabolic uh, toxins and uh, through the urination through the perspiration or through the bowel movement so whatever the waste products are there which are not desirable for our body that is also excreted through this help of the water then maintaining the cellular homeostasis so the body internal balance the perfect balance state or the the dynamic balance which the body has that is also maintained by the water so water is required uh, right quantity of water is required to maintain the homeostasis then maintenance of the vascular volume so for our healthy cardiovascular system the right quantity of water is essential then we know that the water is the transport medium of providing nutrients to all our body cells so all over the body the nutrition nutrition that is supplied through this water only so you can understand that if the person is not taking proper quantity of water or if there is some kind of mismanagement in intake of water all these important function all these vital function of our body will be affected then coming to the best water for drinking so actually lot of importance is given for the rain water harvesting so actually this is described in our ancient text also that the water which is collected which is the rainy water which is collected in a safe uh, container that water can be used for the whole year but now because of so much pollution even the rain will be the very chemical rain so we can avoid the first two three rains and after that the rain with the water which comes through the rain that water we can store and this water can be used we just require some very normal purificatory methods and by that we can use this rain water for the whole year so there is no need of going for the earth water or even if we do not have uh, the the possibility of having a safe water from the river or the to the pond or etc then this rain water is very beneficial and it's a very natural one and it is prized very much in the ancient text and now also lot of importance is given for the rain water harvesting so it is mentioned as very it is naturally cool and it is very pure and it is very beneficial for our uh, health and it is having very pleasant taste also so though we say that the water is tasteless but when the person is thirsty he can actually realize the taste of water so water is very tasty also it is very pleasant and it is devoid of any contamination the rain water which comes that is devoid of any contamination the only thing is we have to avoid the first two three rains because of this pollution we have to uh, leave this first two three rains water after that we can collect and it is light very light for digestion so that is very good for digestion some of the general guidelines for taking water the one important thing about consuming water is we have to understand our uh, urge of thirst whenever the body require water whenever there is a need of water the body manifest it in the form of thirst urge of thirst so whenever we have thirst that time we have to take water and when we have thirst we should not uh, compensate with taking some kind of uh, food items so whenever there is a thirst we have to take proper quantity of water and whenever we are hungry that time we have to take food so it should not be uh, compensated each other and 
actually uh, understanding this uh, body language is very very important if we are very careful we know uh, the body exhibits or body manifest everything in the form of us like even when uh, there is a urge of urine then we have to go for the passing of the urine when there is a urge of defecation we have to go for the defecation so the body tells everything at what time what is required so if we are very careful so we will fulfill the need in the proper time and in the proper way so that is very important guideline for water intake then there is one uh, opinion or one kind of that uh, one kind of following is going on and many people they take lot of water they say that if i am taking lot of water then uh, the body waste will be eliminated so even without thirst they will take lot of water there is there will be no thirst and some some of the people those who are sitting in whole day in the ac room they also drink water even without thirst so actually the ancient scriptures it mentioned that the water should not be consumed without thirst and excess of water consumption is detrimental for our health the little more quantity of water is required only during the sharad ritu that is autumn season and the summer season the autumn season and the grief in the summer season there will be little more perspiration so that time you may require some little more water otherwise in the winter season and rainy season and other seasons spring season etc you do not require much quantity of water so only when you have thirst that time only you have to drink water there is no need of fixing some amount like every day in all the season i will wake up and i will drink 2 liters of water irrespective of the summer irrespective of the winter so that much water i will drink so this is not the correct method so we have to be little bit careful about quantity of water and taking water in different season then the quality of water the quantity and quality of water so the world health organization estimates that globally nearly 2 billion people use a drinking water which is contaminated by the fecal matter so the world population at present is nearly 8 billion and nearly 2 billion people then do not have access for the safe water so you can understand nearly 25% of our whole world population is deprived of clean water so that is the a very big issue about this uh, water and this water will become source for the various kind of diseases so many water borne diseases are there which are troubling in many uh, underdeveloped or developing countries such as the cholera diarrhea dysentery hepatitis typhoid and many other water borne diseases that all are cause of this uh the polluted water which the people consume and that this is a very big issue not only for the india but even all over the world and you know that to purify the water as there is no access to clean water but the people have developed some certain method and some certain devices technology is available to clean the water so like the uv treated water or the reverse osmosis methods so these all are the methods through which they, uh, almost you find in every kitchen there will be ro or there will be uv system is installed and they consume this water but actually this water is good for our health or not that is a questionable and even the scientists they are discussing about the uh, whether using this Uh, uv treated or reverse osmosis treated water is good or not so demineralization is one of the method like when we do this reverse osmosis the water is completely demineralized and so many minerals which are essential for our health that is also removed from the water and this water is called as the hungry water when we take this water 
it may fulfill our uh, thirst it may subside our thirst but so many things which are the minerals etc which we get through the water that is all lacking in this water so that uh, that method whether it is good for our health is again a questionable then the reverse osmosis method so ro system is installed in many of the places in almost every kitchen they have this reverse osmosis nowadays so this is also found that there are the people those who are continuously consuming this reverse osmosis treated water they lack vitamin b12 and when there is a lack of vitamin b12 the person will feel lethargy he will be having muscle ache body pain so these all problems he will develop and this was revealed so whether we should use uh, ro method or these uh, reverse osmosis uh, uh, ro method or uhv treated water so that all we have to look a bit uh think about again the another important thing is now the people say that uh, alkaline water is very good for my health and alkaline water consuming alkaline water will be helpful to avoid the hypertension and to cardiovascular problems and even there are some uh scientific opinions or some papers that they say that consuming alkaline water will even be helpful to avoid some of the cancer or some of the malignant changes in the body so we should know actually what kind of water or what ph is suitable for drinking what ph water is suitable for drinking so actually generally 6.5 to 8.5 to this range if we are taking water that is good for our health so 7 is the neutral and below 7 it is the acidic and above 7 the ph above 7 that is alkaline so 6.5 to 8.5 this is the normal range and to this range water is good for health generally when we are consuming some drinks which are very acidic that will change our blood ph and actually the blood ph the normal range of our blood ph is 7.35 so 7.34 to 7.35 a very narrow range so whenever there is a too much acidic consumption we are taking some juices or some kind of this uh, packaged drinks beverages which are very acidic in nature that we are consuming that will alter our blood ph and when our blood ph is altered suppose if you are taking two alkaline water more than 8.5 then it will it will make the blood alkaline so we say it as the alkalemia and whenever we are drinking so many beverages which are acidic in nature then it will change the blood ph and the blood will be having more the blood will become more acidic in nature we say it as the acidemia and there are so many complications because of these excess of Uh, alkaline intake or excess of acidic intake so we have to maintain we have to try to maintain this particular range so slight alkaline water or slight acidic that is fine our health will maintain it but too much alkaline or too much acidic is better to avoid then the temperature this is also very important so our body normal body temperature is 37 degree centigrade or 98.6 degree fahrenheit so the water which we are consuming if it is too much vary from our normal body temperature suppose if you are consuming ice water which is very chilled 10 degree 15 degree 20 degree so there is a large difference of nearly 15 to 70 degree difference or if you are consuming very hot drinks so of 45 degree 50 degree like that so that also becomes that also thing take of these things will cause lot of stress to our body because the body temperature has to adjust and this uh, the our gi system or whole gastrointestinal system has to work to process this water which is very chilled or very hot so it is always advisable that 
we should take uh, water which is varying nearly 5 to 7 degree of our normal body temperature so suppose our uh, as i told that our normal body temperature is 37 degree so we should take the water which is nearly 30 degree and above we can take it nearly to 42 or maximum to 45 degree within that range if we are consuming it will not it will be beneficial and it will not cause much trouble to our body and taking normal room temperature water is always good or even having the slight warm water that is also very good for our digestive system or our uh, immune system then as we discussed in the reverse osmosis system where the water is demineralized but the water contains so many important minerals like the calcium magnesium potassium sodium bicarbonate iron zinc etc and these all minerals they are essential for the body so the water they should if they are present in the right quantity they will be very good for our health they are required for our normal body function but if these can these uh, minerals are excess in quantity then also we have to take a specific measure to uh, reduce these minerals from our water the packaged water so now this has become very common actually if we just think about some 10 to 20 years back there was not so much uh, uh, use of this packaged water but now even when we travel or even uh, we go for the food etc most of the times we can take this plastic packaged water and actually this water which is stored in this plastic container this plastic container contains bisphenol a in short we say it as the bpa and this particular chemical is very hazardous for our health and uh, it directly affects our reproductive system so there may be cases of uh, infertility etc which may be related with continuously drinking of this plastic packaged water or it may also affect our hormonal system so some kind of hormonal abnormality may also occur because of continuously consuming this plastic packaged water one more thing is now we say that like the tea etc for serving the tea we use this plastic uh, container or for the juices etc that all comes in the plastic container or even served in the plastic container actually these plastic container they have very uh, they are having microplastics and whenever we put uh, drinks in this tea coffee or uh, any juices etc what happens is the immediately these microplastics they get mixed with the water or whatever the liquid is put into that and when we are consuming this microplastic also enters to our system so actually the plastic is a very big issue for our health also for our nature also so uh, actually we have to find out some uh, good methods to replace this use of plastic or other than the bottle even the polythene bags many many places the water is available in a small polythene pouch so these kind of water is not safe for our health other than this reverse osmosis this that whatever is done it is treated water then the and the second problem is of use of this plastic so microplastics will enter into the bomb, this water and it will enter to our body and it will create lot of health issues the quantity of the water so as i told that our body lot of organs in the body like such as our lungs it is 80% of water our brain our heart it is nearly 75% of water even the our bones they are nearly 20 to 20% of water so taking too little of water is very very harmful 
and again taking two excess of water again it will disrupt the whole bodily functions in general we require nearly 2.5 to 3.5 liters of water healthy adult person in the normal environment that means not too hot not very cold generally in a day where the temperature is nearly in between the 25 to 30 degree centigrade we require nearly 2.5 to 3.5 liter of water per day the important thing is when we are thinking about consuming 2.5 to 3.5 liter of water we should we should not only think about this water which we are drinking we are taking tea coffee fruit juices or even the dal or soups so that all contain water so only having a separate 2.5 liter it does not mean that that means all together you are taking whatever the fruit juices or the soup or etc that also prepared from water or butter milk or anything which you are using that also have a lot of water so all together this is the quantity what we require in a normal uh, environment but if it is very hot environment of it is very cold environment so that time again it will be very then <clears throat> everyone may have uh, experienced when they are not taking enough quantity of water so it will create dryness in the mouth the person will feel very thirsty and because of the lack of the water the urine color will be very dark yellowish color then he may be having some uh, dizzy feeling giddiness headache and he will feel very lethargy tired so these all are the symptoms of lack of water then excess over hydration or when a person is consuming too much of water even without requirement even the body does not need but excess of water he is consuming that may create nausea vomiting diarrhea and one of the very common problem which we find in the person those who are consuming lot of water early in the morning that they will suffer with indigestion the food will not be properly digested they will feel fullness of the abdomen and they think that i am taking early in the morning lot of water that is very good for my health so this is again they have to little bit work on the quantity of water what they are consuming how to decide what is right quantity of water for me so one thing about the body constitution second is about the physical activity third thing to decide the right quantity of water is season so suppose a person who is involved in lot of physical activities he is doing lot of work there will be lot of sweating also so such person requires more quantity of water it may above 3.5 also and suppose there is a summer season so because of the temperature goes up to the 45 46 47 degree lot of because of very hot environment there will be lot of perspiration lot of sweating that time you require more quantity of water so it depends upon and the some certain people those whose body is little bit heat in nature so they also require some more quantity of water some people their body is not that much heat so they require just normal quantity of water that means near about 2.5 to 3.5 liter of water so considering all those things your physical activity the environment outside and your body constitution considering all those things you have to fix what kind of water you require and one very basic vital point in this is understanding your body language that means the body itself will represent how much quantity of water it requires in the form of thirst so whenever there is a urge of thirst that time we have to take water this is very important principle of water intake then heating and boiling our drinking water so this is very good that consuming warm water or hot water is very good for our health and there are so many studies which says that uh this drinking warm water it improves our uh, immune system and it is helpful for the digestion it relieves the nasal congestion and throat congestion so this is very commonly followed also 
whenever the person is suffering from some throat irritation or cold cough etc generally he will be advised to take warm water and not to take cold water so this is right method and scientifically studied also that it the such consuming uh, warm water whenever the person is having some allergic tinnitus or he, whenever he is having cold cough these kind of issues then consuming warm, warm water hot water is good then it also helps to reduce constipation the person who is having constipation it is advisable that he should take little warm water routinely then this consuming warm water it prevents premature aging helps in weight loss so this is again a common uh, the people commonly follow whenever there is the people who are obese they consume warm water so this is very right method then this warm water it helps in the better circulation and it helps to reduce or to eliminate the or metabolic toxins so again the important thing here is when i say that consuming warm or hot water so the range should not be very high so the range should be nearly 5 to 7 degree difference from our body temperature so body temperature is 37 so we can go up to 45 but not too much hot water the boiled and cooled water this is very good but the important thing to remember in this is if i am boiling the water today i have to finish this water today itself or i should boil only what is required for this to uh, the whole day if i boil the water today and consume the same water tomorrow or after after tomorrow so this is not the right method so we boil the water we have to boil the water and then we have to consume the water on the same day not keeping it for the next day so if we are doing this then this boiled and cooled water it is very good for the summer season is very good for the autumn season during this october november period this consuming this water is very beneficial for our health then already i told that the water which is boiled and kept overnight so that pot water will become it will be acidic and this water is not good for our health it will derange all the bodily humors and it will be harmful for our health so it is always advisable that water which is boiled we say it as the cooked water so cooked thing we, we keep it we do not don't keep it generally for the next day so cooked water should be consumed on the same day itself then the storage of water so in the olden days you will find that most of the people they used to keep the uh, this copper tumbler even the yogis they used to keep this copper tumbler and they, they were walking roaming here and there and where, wherever they were finding the water the river or in the pond they used to collect the water in the copper tumbler or the copper vessel and scientifically it was found that keeping the water in the copper uh, vessel just by keeping itself all the diarogenic harmful bacteria will be killed and this water will become very safe for drinking and these uh, once they are killed they will not regenerate again they will not grow again so that is also found just by keeping the water in the copper vessel that itself is sufficient to clean the water so whenever we have to store the water it is always advisable that we should keep this uh, uh, water in the copper vessel but the only thing is uh, maintaining the copper vessel because the copper vessel we have to properly clean every day otherwise there will be again uh, it will have a greenish kind of layers formation so if the if you are not washing it properly then the water will again it will not be that clean it will be again affected so we have to thoroughly clean the vessel every day and then only we can use this copper vessel nowadays there are methods like uh, in the steel Uh, this container there will be one copper rod so there will be in the central copper rod will be there so that kind of methods is also used or sometimes in the steel container they will just put one rod 
so it will be easy to clean also this method is also used uh, for storing the water and other container where we can keep water is the mud pot so in the summer season in india it is very commonly followed that the people they use mud pot but when we are keeping in mud pot we should be sure about the quality of water because mud it will make the water naturally cool but it will not uh, kill the bacteria which are present there so we have to be very careful or we can follow the other method that we can boil the water cool it and then we can keep it if we are suspicious about the source of water and the water may be harmful so these kind of methods we can follow there are scientific studies which say that the copper what copper pots kills contaminating diarogenic bacteria and it is published then coming to the various spices which are used for uh, processing the water so like the cumin seed zira or sometimes the ginger or the clove etc are used so whenever the person is suffering with some digestive trouble bloating of the abdomen so in that cases we can use these processed water and in the like the season wise also we can change the uh, drugs which we are using for processing the water like in the summer season we can use certain herbs which are cooling in nature like in the kerala side it is always very hot season so they use some drugs which are cooling in nature like the chandana etc or the patranga that is all sandalwood that all we they are using to process the water and in the winter season we can use some certain drugs which are little bit hot in nature so like we can use this uh, lavanga and the clove or the ginger these kind of water so it will help in the digestion process and it is beneficial for our health also so there are various uh, description about ginger which is used ginger for using this uh processing the water it will help in case of nausea flatulence or indigestion so it will be very helpful and uh, cinnamon it helps uh, and it it will be antiviral it has antiviral effect so it will help in that case and it will also reduce the fat from the body then the clove so clove is again it is having antiviral and anti parasite effect so if the water is processed so it will be helpful for our killing all the parasites which are present in the in the water then coming to the uh consumption of water so in relation to food so generally uh what is advised is whenever like in a full course of meal we have different kind of food items some food items are sweet some food items are sour in taste some are very spicy so such various uh, various kinds of food items are there so when we are consuming food suppose if we are consuming sweet item and after that we are shifting to some other taste it is always advisable to take few sips of water in between so in the full course of meal when we are shifting from one item to other item it is advisable to take few sips of water during the meal immediately before the food or immediately after the food consuming water is not advisable so immediately before the food if the person is consuming water then it will uh, it will create problem in the digestion and similarly if after the food immediately he is consuming water you can take a very one or two sips that is fine to clean whatever the particles are there in the mouth but not that drinking a full glass of water immediately after the food or drinking a large quantity of water immediately before the food in between the food taking few sips of water is helping for the digestion and also it will help to relish the food or to enjoy the taste of the food so consuming water in between the food that is recommended 
so again i told that just before the food then the digestive enzyme it will be diluted and the food will not be digested properly and uh, in between if you are taking that will help for the digestion and even you can enjoy the taste of the food then consuming two different kinds of water one is boiled water and one is normal water so that is also not advisable so if you are consuming warm water it is advisable that throughout the day you consume only warm water and if you are consuming normal water you take normal water for the whole day suppose if you are taking warm water early in the morning and again you have to shift for the next uh, normal water then you give proper gap and just to see whether the previously water which you have consumed is properly digested or not and you have proper thirst or not then only you can shift from one kind of water to another kind of water but drinking one time cold water one time hot water one so this is not very correct method of water intake so the usha pana consuming water early in the morning so usha pana we say generally it should be done in the early in the morning before sunrise and when i say before sunrise that means nearly 1 hour before the sunrise so brahma muhurta we say as 96 minute to 48 minute before the sunrise that is the correct time of brahma muhurta the person who is waking up in that muhurta he is advised to take the water but most of the people those who get up late in the morning or after the sunrise and consume water and think that this is the right method of maintaining health they will suffer with lot of issues and when they are putting lot of water in the system then they are giving extra load to the system again the digestion etc will be affected because of the excess water they have consumed so the digestive system has to work more so when you are waking up before the sunrise at least half an hour before the sunrise then you can go for taking water then how much quantity you should take that is also important so actually the quantity which is described here it is from 48 ml nearly 50 ml just nearly one cup to you can go for up to 750 ml but again it depends upon the season it depends upon your body constitution it depends upon the kind of physical activity you are involved in so not the same quantity of water is suited for all the person so everyone has to understand and he has to calculate himself or herself at how much water is required for me so too much water will be harmful and again the timing of the water is very important here when we say that usha pana so usha pana is for the usha kala and usha kala is before the sunrise so that time the person who will wake up he has to take the water then suitable water for the usha pana this is again important so what kind of water should i consume uh, when i am waking up before the sunrise so uh, generally if it is possible to process the water then you can process it with some of the herbs like the ela or what we say the elaichi or cardamom ushira karpura chandana sandalwood so these all are the some herbs if i have the possibility to process the water then i have to process this water and keep into the copper copper pot or into the mud pot and early morning i have to take this water if this is not possible then normal water is also sufficient normal water also can be consumed but we have to be careful about the timing of consuming this water so brahma murta already i told that it is 48 minute to 40 96 minute before the sunrise so if we generally consider the sunrise at 6 o'clock so the brahma murta will start from 4:24 to 5:12 so roughly you can take it as is 4:30 to 5:15 so that is the time of brahma murta at that time you have to consume this water 
if you want to get benefit of the usha pana then the quantity of water is again it is from 1 to 16 years 48 ml so it's just near a little less than one cup and for a 16 to 20 year he can go for 96 ml so it is again nearly half a glass of water and uh, above 20 years of age they can go from the 96 ml to 375 ml and even they can go little more based on their body constitution season and their physical activity involvement in the physical activities one more method which is described in uh, ayurveda is the nasa jalapana so again for the nasa jalapana the time which is mentioned is the brahma mahurta and this we have to consume 48 ml roughly we can say as the 50 ml of water through the nose we have to drink this water through the nose and this water will be very beneficial and it is mentioned that it will the person who is following this method he will get rid of all kinds of uh, problem related with his senses most of our senses are in our like the eyes nose ear these all are in our head region so the person who is consuming water his all senses will be working perfectly and he will get even the 100 years of life disease free life and some of the problem of like the hair fall or the graying of the hairs these all will he will not be suffering with any of these kind of issues the person who is taking water through the nose early in the morning in brahma mahurta so uh we came to the conclusion so both over hydration and in adequate intake of water is harmful for her health in general the person require nearly 2 to 3 liter of water every day so when you are calculating this you have to also see how much other items you are consuming tea coffee fruit juices soups etc so all together you have to consider the quantity of the water and the kind of environment you are working in suppose if you are working in a very ac environment there is no sweating at all such environment you do not require much water if you are consuming it will just create too much extra load to your whole digestive system and including your kidneys because kidney they have to process all the water then <clears throat> we have to avoid uh, excess and too little drinking of water then alternate water intake that is not a good habit so one time a normal water next time boiled water so that is not the right way of water intake whenever we are consuming water we have to follow the same kind of water for whole of the day and if you want to shift then we have to see that we should the, the, we should observe that the previous water is completely digested and then when the thirst is properly manifested that then or that time only we have to take the uh, alternate water then the traditional method of disinfection disinfection and uh, storage that is very good for our health because uh, that ancient method that is developed out after a lot of experience and trying it for several years so instead of going for this reverse osmosis method or the uhv treated method which is already question, questionable its health, health effects are already it is already under discussion and whether to be used or not to use that is all already going on and many of the scientists they say that this is not good for our health so instead of going for these all modern technology based uh, treatment of water it is advisable to go for the traditional method of disinfection of water and its storage so thank you so much to all the participants and uh, if anyone would like to share something or anyone would like to ask something i will try to answer yeah so oh my god it was <laughs> 
eye opening there are so many practices that we think that oh we are smart and we know it in fact there are so many things that you have you have uh, shown us that uh, what is the correct way of drinking correct time correct quantity and correct method it was enlightening to me at least yeah thank you so uh, uh now let us invite anybody if uh, if anybody wants to ask anything you're most welcome to ask me ask namaste sir ji ji namaste sir ek sawal tha agar aro ji nahi istemal kare to pani kaise purify kare kyunki pani ki quality hi itni kharab ho gayi hai kuch samajh nahi aata so if you could please tell us how to purify water because we have hard जी water जी and you know there's a lot of problems which happen due to the quality of water mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so one simple method is to boil it and keep into the uh, copper pot or if you are feeling that the maintaining copper pot is very difficult then you can have one copper rod so copper mm-hmm. rod you can just keep in your steel vessel that itself will kill most of the harmful bacteria and that is scientifically proven and even now uh, there are like copper treated water some copper uh, this uh, technology they have developed so copper based uh, this uh, water purifier that is also available but instead of going to that kind of things simply boiling the water and keeping into the a uh, copper container or keeping in a container where the copper rod, rod is placed that itself will be sufficient thank you so much sir so copper rod can be kept in, in the earthen pot also okay earthen pot also we can keep okay. yes ah dr kavita ji hmm. you want you want to ask something yes ma'am yes ma'am thank you so much dr akhilesh for wonderful session I just want to understand uh, as per the prakriti uh, the temperature of the water mm-hmm. or the quantity of the water differ if the, if the vata prakriti patient mm-hmm. is there or pitta prakriti or kapha mm-hmm. prakriti mm-hmm. is there any mm-hmm. recommendations yeah 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 so generally the pitta prakriti person their body will be having excess of heat so they are advisable they are advised to take uh, the boiled and cool water mm-hmm. not the hot water because if they are consuming hot water again they will feel discomfort whereas the okay. vata and kapha prakriti person they can go for consuming warm water there is no problem okay and quantity also yeah. differ yeah quantity also differ see pitta person usually as uh, the body is heat in nature they will be having more sweating also so they require little more quantity of water they will feel thirsty also kapha person will not feel that much thirsty thirsty right right uh, but vata person again he uh, he may feel thirsty but he requires little warm water he, it will be good for uh, the vata prakriti person and vata prakriti person they are having some dryness of the skin etc so again uh, the proper hydration will be very good for him will be helpful right and sir so, so, if so. the vata pitta prakriti combination we see is very common ha 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 yeah yeah so, yeah see one normal uh, method of how much quantity should i take that depends upon your urge of thirst this is yes, the sir. very gold golden rule we golden say golden rule hmm. that where your body will tell you what it requires so okay if you are, you are feeling thirsty it is advisable to take water So okay. again uh, the one important thing is whenever we are feeling thirsty we have to take water sip by sip little by little like we are taking tea similar manner we have to take water also not like taking whole glass of water or whole bottle of water and drinking all together at once so we have to take water sip by sip so that will be very comfortable for our digestive system once we are consuming lot of water at once that will 
create extra load to our system that what low hole the water we have it has to undergo the process so at a time large quantity of water will not be very good thank you so much sir thank you my pleasure my pleasure you told us about uh, digestion of Achy. water what is mm-hmm. digestion of water yeah yeah see di- uh, when we are there is a description of uh, a disease in ayurveda we say uh. as jala ajirna oh jala ajirna that means the water itself will create indigestion oh if it is consumed in excess amount it will uh. create indigestion uh. so jala ajirna is also one of the problem and jala ajirna chikitsa the treatment uh. of jala ajirna is also described in ayurveda so when we are consuming water that also has to undergo all the digestive processes oh so that's what ha huh, when the two different water we have to consume like suppose a person is taking some kind of medicine or some kind of things early in the morning with the warm water ha huh. and next he do not have access for the warm water ha huh. then he has to see that the previous water which i have consumed is properly digested or not oh so digested or not that can be observed by the feeling the of lightness in the abdomen a clear belching in the Uh, a clear um, belching and uh, uh, feeling of thirst proper thirst so again it should not be pseudo thirst most of the people no those who consume lot of water for uh, months together or years together so they will develop a kind of pseudo thirst they will not be thirsty but they will be having a kind of mindset that i have to consume the water the body will not require that but mind will said no no you take water because they are habituated for <coughs> taking a lot of water so that they have to little bit differentiate they have to understand the real thirst which is coming from the body or the body is indicating mm. so uh, that uh, that observation careful observation is required when we are thirsty how mm-hmm. much how, uh, see thirsty and we we take a glass and start drinking <laughs> okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what 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 is the time when i when should i stop when i uh, when i feel like stopping should i stop there mm-hmm. see uh, i told that <laughs> you have to take sip by sip huh. like we are taking tea huh. you have to take sip by sip yeah and when you feel satisfied that time you have to stop okay okay uh, sip by sip doesn't mean that you take it for half an hour taking <laughs> one one sip Uh-huh. just to ten you take little time uh-huh. don't drink at a time the whole glass of water and some people drink even milk like one one gad 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 and they finish it uh, no 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 that, no, no. Is, that is again not good not good milk or fruit juices or anything we have to take very slowly okay okay hmm. yeah we have shalaka asking something ji ji please Yes ma'am ma'am I joined very late but I had one concern regarding water ha uh, sir uh-huh. what is uh, uh, your opinion about alkaline water yeah alkaline water i told that the water should have the ph range from 6.5 to 8.5 okay so 7 is the normal ph above 7 it is alkaline okay so when we say alkaline water it should not cross 8.5 Okay. If it is crossing at point five, it is very detrimental for our health. It is not at all good for our health. Beyond eight point five, ha maximum eight point five. It is better to restrict nearly eight only. But is it advisable to drink it every day? Yeah. See, uh, if within this range of water, you can take every day. There is no issue. Okay, because uh, ah. uh, there are now people who are uh, you know mm-hmm. promoting alkaline water. Alkaline so water, I... yeah. But again, we should know how much alkaline, at what range. If it is going high, then again it will cause lot of health hazards. Otherwise, it, it is, is beneficial. Cross... Otherwise, it is beneficial. But how will we come to know what is the pH? Actually, now in the is, like, uh, they have got a machine. Ah. who will Hello? buy the machine to uh, know the ph it has to be known mm. in a in a you know uh, without no. any such ma'am i had one 
uh, one person who had come for the presentation for alkaline water uh, uh, he was selling like aqua guard machine which uh, converts uh, water into alkaline water and then uh, we drink uh, uh, yeah. okay like shalaka you missed shows the range also uh, yeah, shalaka yeah, wait you have missed the whole discussion on this thing it yeah, will be yeah. available on youtube very soon okay okay you ma'am. join okay, ma'am. Um, uh, 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 shraddha those links will be available on the chat right now ha huh. so shalaka you join the community yes yes ma'am ha huh. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah yeah you will watch this whole thing whole discussion yes. okay, and let me ma'am. let you. me also announce that next week same discussion will happen in hindi so so in case if you follow you you would like to follow of course it is not for uh, sonoko you and lilija <laughs> but uh some other people who are hindi speaking the same thing same lecture will be done in the hindi and we are coming up with the series see this was on water intake next month we will have food intake then maybe next to next maybe you know nidra or something we will dr akhilesh will guide us how how we will take them so i request okay. you all to please keep in touch and and uh, join the zoom meeting Okay. Sure, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. So, anybody else would like to ask anything? Yes, yes. I would like to During, ask uh, uh, the same thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, just a minute. Anita ji is asking right now. Yes, okay. yes. I want. Then we will wait. Uh, we are right here. We are not going anywhere. Anita okay. ji. Yeah. Yes, uh, I want to uh, repeat your question, Doctor Rajni ji. Uh, like, yes. how to judge the pH level of water? Ah. Huh. <laughs> Without any uh-huh. machine. <laughs> Uh, actually i think this ph paper is available through which you can know the exact uh, ph of your water okay it is paper. like uh, some ha uh, paper is available this paper so that based on the color change of that paper you can know the uh, ph of your is water is it readily uh-huh. available in the market it is not possible practically uh, you actually, know actually i have oh, <laughs> yes. uh, i know it is a little bit difficult to uh, uh, get hold of uh, these things Also, I, I don't ha, think it's readily. You get it easily. You get it easily in mm-hmm. on Amazon. I already have it. I can actually show oh, you if you want. Okay. Okay. Can you show? It is very show? easily. Yes, I'm just searching for it. I'll I'll just show you in one minute. It is very okay. easily available on mm-hmm. Amazon. Around one fifty rupees or one seventy rupees for uh, a bundle of eighty strips. Ah, hey, I will buy ha. bananas for that money. Why should I waste money on those? Actually, <laughs> true. Uh, but we are working with patients, so sometimes we have to use it. That yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Kept it. Ah, see, but otherwise, you are a doctor. Doctor Kavita, like you yes. are a doctor. Yeah. It is, it is your duty to show the precise things. You know, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. How much and what and how much hemoglobin yeah. and how much. But but for yeah. us, it has to be homely and without homely, any cost. Homely, yes. Exactly. Without any cost, exactly. it will not cost us anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. right thank you thank you yeah is there any way dr akhilesh uh i don't know any such way like without using of any because when we have to judge the ph some uh, this tool is required so one easiest one is you can go for the paper this ph paper through which you can know the exactly or maybe you can suggest the quantity of the things to be put in the water bottle or something how much cucumber how much lemon like that any any measurement is there like half a slice uh something like that thumb rule like making the making water acidic or alkaline yes, yes. how much lemon to be used uh, how much cucumber to be used uh uh-huh. see again this like uh, everywhere the water will be different like whatever the water you are getting it may not be having the same ph of every places so again if you have to judge how much uh, lemon to be added to make the water acidic or how much other things to be added to ma- make it uh, alkaline again we have to check it through the uh, this ph paper or through some hmm. other tool okay acha generally I, dr akhilesh adding uh, adding yeah, yeah. lemon does it make water acidic or does it make it alkaline adding lemon lemon is mostly it is uh, See, soda is making alkaline. Ha. But lemon again, I will check. But mostly, it is making acidic liquid. Okay, okay. I will check. I will check again. But cucumber, but like I soda, think it is making. Say, cucumber hmm. and uh, mint leaves are making it alkaline. 
pudina mm. pudina patta and uh, khira mm. these are making it alkaline maybe i have to check i have not tried in this way judging uh, okay this. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay okay shiva chaitanya ji wanted to ask something shiva chaitanya ji mm. Now time is over. I want हाँ, to know बोल सकते हैं the mechanism हाँ. of water digestion in shankha prakshalana. Oh, shankha prakshalana. Actually, shankha prakshalana. What we are trying is we have we, our uh, idea there is to clean the whole GI tract, not about the digestion. Yeah. We are we want to clean it. We have to just flush it out. so that is what the method we take lot of water and then we flush it out but what is advisable here is just to put little bit uh, salt in this make the water as normal saline so that will be more uh, helpful hmm. uh, okay shraddha so that is generally what we say hmm. yeah okay shraddha you wanted to ask something ha huh. i just wanted to ask this is a very new hmm. concept for me to make water alkaline So I mm-hmm. was just going to ask how to make the water alkaline. Ah, uh, somebody just actually, asked. Actually, yeah. ha, actually, what is happening is nowadays this alkaline water device is available. So, like we have the RO water and this uh, UV treated water device. Similarly, now the device is there where you can make the water little alkaline. Mm. So when they are making it alkaline, they should know the range of how much range is. the safe one safe range of drinking this water so that is what i discussed but there are herbs etc which will make the water alkaline or acidic dissolve so we have to just to see like i have not uh, gone through what are the herbs you have to use to make it acidic or alkaline i have to again uh, see it if you are mm-hmm. using already uh, a water which is ro already mm-hmm. we can make that same water alkaline is it possible or only normal water mm. can be converted into alkaline no 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 that water also can be used then can be converted into the alkaline water by using some of the herbs but like the exactly what are the herbs and whether it, how much it will make the water alkaline that i have not found any such uh, proper description like if you are processing it with the clove or ginger with how much alkaline it will make that i have not uh gone through but it is possible to make it alkaline otherwise the ready made this uh, alkalinizer is available in the market so what i was suggesting is we should know the range to what range is safe range so if we know this then we will not uh, go for the excess of alkaline or very acidic kind of things so, so that a little bit idea is required hmm. acha some some people use fitkari alum hmm, to hmm, purify hmm. the water hmm, hmm, how good hmm. is that that we can do uh, alum we can use for this is a, again the traditional method of uh, purifying, purifying the water uh, but again the alum is it will not uh the bacteria and etc which are present it will not kill them uh, so again once we have uh, filtered once we have uh, alum treated water again we can keep it in the copper vessel or we can boil and then we can it will put alum that method we can follow now i want to ask some people say mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that it is better not to use filtered water not to use uh filtered mm-hmm. and treated in the sense mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. kill the germs and this and that they say that drink contaminated water so it no, will no, increase no, no. boost your your immunity mm-hmm. by using mm-hmm. filtered water you are killing mm-hmm. your immunity how how no, no, is no, that no 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 see if the water is contaminated see what kind of contamination is there that is also important see if you have the source of safe water suppose ah. you are uh, you are taking some uh, well water mm. or the river water which is very clean you can directly drink but now it is what is happening is all this waste of the cities and everything is poured into the river poured into the uh, this and sometimes this uh, there is a 
um, method of uh, this deep well injection so uh. these chemicals etc what they will do is they will put a very deep hole in the earth and all the chemical will be put into the inside the earth what it will do is it will contaminate the whole uh, water reservoir in the below the earth of many of a very large area so that kind of methods are there so if we are consuming raw water without uh, knowing whether it is safe or not so it may it will be a very great risk for our health suppose the diarogenic bacteria are there some typhoid related things cholera all these kind of things are there in the water it will create a very big issue for our health yes. okay so it is better to it is better to always ha, drink safe water and some simple method as i discussed that hmm. simply keeping the water in the copper vessel that itself is sufficient sufficient yeah to purify it and yeah. to kill Dr. all the diarogenic harmful bacteria yeah doctor akhilesh uh, what is the best way of cleaning a copper vessel see copper vessel you can use any of the sore things like the tamarind or the lemon if you okay. use these water vessel this copper vessel will be cleaned very nicely okay little bit lemon and salt if you use these two things combination okay so, okay thank you the tamarind thank you. little tamarind bit tamarind or uh, salt so, and lemon haan. okay and you said that lemon ha tamarind Okay. And this copper vessel should be washed. I mean, cleaned every day. Ha! If we have to clean it every day, otherwise you will find that the copper vessel will have a kind of layer, greenish layer. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, that will not be safe. Hmm. Oh, I so see. So it is better to clean it every day. So that's what I suggested to keep a rod because rod will be very easy to easy wash. To clean. If you have a pot. pot will be little bit we require some effort to clean it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but do we get authentic copper rods in the market nowadays ha we can we can get copper rod we can get or simply if you have copper glass also you can keep into the water oh, oh yeah put it <laughs> okay oh that's a good idea good idea yeah. <laughs> the, the only water. thing is we require the water water coming in contact with the copper that is the idea yeah yeah okay richa you so want you to can ask do it with the rod you can do it with any of the vessel richa you are asking something richa dube yeah uh, yes, yes good evening ma'am yes sir i want to ask you it's not i don't think it's uh, it's little different just now we are what we are uh-huh. discussing Uh, so how i'm asking my question is how to take drink water like in whatsapp many uh, we are uh, seeing this uh, whatsapp uh, messages like we have to drink water while sitting only don't stand and sit water uh, don't stand and uh, drink water don't gulp mm-hmm. your water at a stance like drink uh, uh, slowly and uh, mm-hmm. slowly slowly and uh, uh, sit and drink water Mm-hmm. and if you stand and drink water so it will affect your uh, means you will, in later stages of life you will have a pain in your bones so how uh-huh. uh, how much it is correct yeah. see there is no such scientific study that standing and drinking water will create some joint problems i have not come across any of the scientific uh, and even in our text also like i am from the ayurveda i have not found any reference where it is mentioned that standing and drinking water will create joint pain but the idea behind this whole thing is like uh, if you are in a comfortable posture and drinking water the what there will be there will be almost no chance or less chance to go and enter into the wrong tract so if suppose we are standing and we are drinking water very uh, hurriedly there may be chance that it may enter to the respiratory tract there will be some difficulty so uh, we should be in a comfortable posture so sitting is a very comfortable posture so by sitting we can drink water and always it is advisable to take like the glass if you have you touch it with your lips and then you drink the water don't drink like uh, in the bottle and keeping it away from your mouth So again the chances of entering of the water into the wrong track will be high 
and then it will create lot of trouble thank you sir so one more question is there ki just now you told me about told us about the copper vessel and copper road like that so uh, in ayurveda it is is it mentioned that we have to drink a uh, uh, gold uh, mean some gold swarna yukto jal like it is it there anything mentioned the uh, some uh-huh. asking that uh, some uh, uh, you can put a gold coin in your water and it will mm-hmm. what is the reason behind and what is the logic behind that and how it affects our uh-huh. immunity and other things please elaborate mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. see the similarly like i told about the uh, copper the silver chandi chandi also has the almost similar property if you just keep you know, the water in the uh, silver pot or silver glass all the diagenic bacteria will be killed automatically just by keeping itself the only thing is uh, the silver or the gold is not affordable like you can <laughs> it is very difficult to have a golden pot and keep the water in that so uh, copper is uh, affordable one mm. but can these put, uh, gold can we put gold, a gold a, ring gold ring into uh, the <laughs> into the water yeah, yeah. yes yes my question is that only ha, can we put ha, some ha. gold coin or some gold ornaments yeah we we uh, ha we can we can keep gold i have not come at any study whether it what kind of effect it will do in the water but for the silver i have gone through some of the studies the silver also so only here in india we have method that whenever this child is born or whenever the kid kid is there we offer some uh, small ball of uh, silver to feed him to feed the kid yeah yeah so so that is the idea behind is that like whatever will be kept in this silver pot so all the this the harmful bacteria etc will be automatically killed in that so, so what, what is the what, what i have noticed the uh-huh. taste of water changes when uh-huh. it is kept in silver copper mm-hmm. plastic mm-hmm. mud mm-hmm. pot in different different yeah, exactly. the same water uh-huh. tastes uh-huh. different and when correct, correct. if we are taking from a mm-hmm. earthen pot taking mm-hmm. in a steel glass and taking mm-hmm. in a uh, copper glass Mm-hmm. that also changes the taste exactly exactly how does that happen does mm-hmm. something come out of the silver glass and goes into the water what is it that changes the taste of the water what comes out yeah. in into the yeah. water see like uh, when we keep water in some this aluminum pot or a steel pot or in a copper pot generally steel is neutral uh, metal it will not react with any this acid or base or anything Uh-huh. but uh, the copper will act like in the copper generally we do not give uh, this butter milk etc or acidic thing in the copper copper vessel copper vessel we do not give this uh, butter milk or the curd or these things because uh-huh. once you keep the curd etc in with the copper things again it will start some greenish kind of color it will be spoiled soon so uh, the water Uh, will have some uh, this uh, some minute particles will be there of this metal also so but again it was tried uh, the studied that if you are keeping this uh, water in the copper pot how much particle is going from the uh, uh, this uh, metal to the water whether it is safe or not so that is thoroughly studied and it was found that it is safe we can without any fear we can keep it but again the only thing is we have to clean the water proper clean the pot uh, properly every day okay hmm. all right anybody else wants to ask anything yeah i i have another question ah. like i have heard a uh, few people say that uh, we should not ah. be consuming water from a silver vessel uh, ah. all the year round like some seasons we should be avoiding water from mm-hmm. silver vessel is it true mm, again i have not come across such studies where they have saying that it in this particular season you drink water in the silver overall the silver is again having the same kind of effect that it will kill all the harmful bacteria which are present so i think you can drink 
but the only thing is maintaining the vessel that is important yes okay but i have not come across any maybe studies rainy where season, they say even i am not uh, remembering it mm. correctly maybe mm. it was mm-hmm. rainy season mm. or something uh, or mm-hmm. maybe autumn uh, or maybe mm-hmm. it is winter because uh, it is said that the water turns very cold in a silver vessel so i don't know i mm-hmm. wanted to ask you that i wanted to clear uh, this doubt mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. i had heard some people mm-hmm. say okay okay so maybe garmi like pee sakte hain ha 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 uh, suppose in the winter if you are taking cold water huh. so it may cause some throat irritation etc that may be the reason okay. but again if you are little bit making it warm and keeping in the silver it doesn't matter okay so it may be the ha uh, it may be like the water is cold not uh-huh. because of the vessel it is because of the uh, temperature of the water that is okay. important here okay mm. okay there is one very interesting study that uh, one mm-hmm. person from japan he did his name mm-hmm. is masaru emoto hmm? mm-hmm. but i will share something and then talk about what yeah, he please. did was he uh, he exposed water mm-hmm. to certain things like he exposed symphony 40 mozarts and mm-hmm. then One ml of water he put in a petri dish, and then he froze mm. the water. So mm. frozen water gave this this kind of structure. Mm-hmm. Then this structure came from the river Ganga. Mm-hmm. One ml of river, and mm. you know it it was frozen in a small petri dish. Mm-hmm. Then this is water after offering prayer. Mm-hmm. He will take the water. put it in a mm. bottle and then pray mm. and mm. sometimes say good words and sometimes mm. he he mm. told you disgust me i dislike you i hate you uh, mm. that kind of so this is the structure mm. and this is the structure when he said you mm. fool like that so mm. these are some of his uh, uh, uh. we say experiments mm. done on water mm. Mm. and then he froze that water one ml of water mm-hmm. not just once 50 such petri dishes and all the 50 will give this kind of structure mm-hmm. and ganga gave this kind of structure and the mozart symphony gave this kind of thing so water mm-hmm. is sensitive yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and the water in our body what are the things we are exposing ourselves to that also affects our body in the sense the the water content in our body when it is exposed to music we have one fantastic musician in front of us sombala didi sombala kumar ji oh, great, great. <laughs> sombala didi pranam now her screen is frozen so we don't know <laughs> if she is there or not <laughs> so when we expose ourselves to good music good words good people then our mm-hmm. health also becomes good and if when very we are true, exposed true. to exposed to bad people bad things mm-hmm. bad mm-hmm. words mm-hmm. and uh, very true very so true that affects us mm-hmm. uh, you know our health also that affects mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. and anyway, this was something that i just no, got it's very mind. yeah very true didi even in uh, our like indian tradition we don't take the water in the hand of a person who is having some kind of enmity enmity towards us ha or any kind of angry the person who is very angry and ha. offering water just generally in indian tradition we don't accept that water yeah because this water has completely a ruined structure ruined kind of arrangements and when it will be taken and it will cause same kind of effect on us yeah. and similarly the water which is there in the near the uh, temple in the temple or offered by the pujari we say it as the tirtham yeah yeah so the simple water which is kept there chanted with some mantras it becomes prasadam it become nectar so so many uh, so with this i wish to thank Dr Akhilesh Shukla ji my my pleasure yeah i want to thank <laughs> shraddha and i want to thank ankita sharma who is hiding behind the word nada laya okay she is responsible for lot of work which 
which is uh, you know seen here and she is the one who is going to give you the youtube uh, uh, video okay so be good to her otherwise we won't <laughs> okay so i wish to thank all each and everybody who is you know directly or indirectly related to yoga chopal and yoga mela in fact it is a brain child of my very close friend dr pravina shetty and uh, she gave me this idea and we are taking it ahead so thank you each and everybody thank you again dr akhilesh shukla my brother thanks thanks, thanks didi for giving me this opportunity thank you so much namaste and see you on 14th in hindi ji. yoga chopal same ji. same subject and same speaker and hopefully ji. same all of us <laughs> yeah my pleasure namaste again bye bye thank you so much thank you so much